but measured at the navel, I think he still had above a 33 inch waist. And this is a dude who, I mean, his waist is ridiculous. What is up guys? So today I want to talk about progress pictures and how misleading they can be. Recently, I had a conversation on Instagram with Brian Borstein. So Brian, if you don't know him, well, if you don't know him, that means you're not watching enough of the Brains Against podcast because he has been on my podcast. I have been on his podcast. We've chatted for a while now on Instagram. Cool guy. He has a lot of experience in the industry uh, as a coach, lifting, all of that. Very impressive physique. So I'll probably link his stuff below, but I'm gonna post a picture here so you can see a comparison shot that he had at the same weight, 194 pounds in both pictures, comparing one year to the next. He sent that to me and I assume he wanted to kind of show the progress that he had made. The post was about the progress that he had made. And again, I'll post some excerpts from the, from the post itself there. But what I said to him was, you know, cause of course somebody's sending this to me and it's like, hey, look at this progress. And, you know, I'm usually a pretty blunt person. And what I did say that, you know, and obviously I talked to him about making this video and this post. And so I wanted to make sure he was okay with it because basically what I said is, I don't think you can look at these pictures and judge really any progress, right? And that's not saying anything bad against Brian at all. It's just when you look at these pictures, they are completely different lighting. Anything that you would be able to pick up at that level of training in pictures that would actually be a gauge of true progress would need to have the exact same lighting, the exact same conditions, same level of flexing, same pose, all of that. And even then it can be hard to really have everything identical. Okay. If you're taking a mirror selfie, you know, one day, and then another day you take another selfie in a different bathroom or something like that. That alone is enough to change it. Somebody who's really great at this is Brian Whitaker. So Brian Whitaker has a series of photos pretty much taking the exact location, the exact pose, and he is so good at it. I remember showing my mom these pictures like a decade ago and seeing if she could tell a difference and she literally didn't believe that they were different pictures. Now, Brian was trying to show his progress and you know whether or not there was really progress there, it's hard to say, but she literally, until I pointed out something else in the pictures, did not believe that it was a different picture, which really goes to show that when you're a natural training for 15 plus years, there's almost no progress to be made, right? And this is a guy who was a pro bodybuilder at that time, very, very hard work ethic, you know, and it still was almost negligible. So when you see, I would almost say that if you can see significant progress in a picture and you're that advanced, there's probably a difference in the picture, right? I had Jeff Verity Schofield on and he made a post recently showing his arms and I think it was pretty much one right after the other as far as taking the pictures. One was very impressive and one was basically just looking like a normal arm. Greg Doucette has these pictures up. These pictures are all over Instagram, right? Where it's like, here's a picture and two hours later or even two seconds later, here's another picture, right? And there's differences in bloat. There's differences, you know, maybe they drank a ton of water, had a lot of sodium containing meals and within a day they can look dramatically different. This isn't new, but it's amazing to me how often misleading pictures can be put up there. Now, I don't think in Brian's case, it was meant to be misleading, but obviously a lot of the pictures we see are very misleading. Of course, because I like to take measurements and know people's stats, because I think it gives people a realistic idea. You know, if somebody shows a picture and it's like, wow, it looks amazing. I'll often say, well, what's your height and what's your weight? Because I know when they say, oh, well, I'm 5'7", I'm 160 pounds. Well, even though you may look huge in that picture, I know that in person, you can't look that huge. In person kind of like equalizes things. There's a lot of people who look amazing or not that amazing in pictures because of their genetic structure. And that matters on a bodybuilding stage. But in person, a lot of people who really look impressive on Instagram don't look that impressive in person because if you're, again, if you're 5'7", 165 pounds, I mean, unless you're doing that in contest shape, then yes, that can be very impressive, but you're, you're just not gonna be a very big person, right? Likewise, there's people who really don't look impressive at all, but then you find out they're 240 pounds. It's like, okay, in person, they're gonna be a big person. Again, doesn't mean that they win a bodybuilding show or anything like that, but that's a big human being. But I brought up the measurements because I wanted to know what the changes were. And he said, well, I didn't take the measurements. And he said, well, the progress, you know, at, at that level, you're probably not even gonna pick it up in measurements. But I would argue that even more so, you're not gonna pick it up in pictures, right? If you have, if you are six feet tall and you go from 200 pounds at 10% body fat to over a year, 201 pounds at 10% body fat, 
you almost certainly will not be able to pick that up in a picture if it was evenly distributed. If you had like only trained biceps and it all went to your biceps, sure, you're gonna notice that. But if you are of a normal height, one or even two pounds of muscle truly might not be noticeable at all in pictures, even though at that stage, that's solid progress. I have pictures where I am 170 pounds and 190 pounds, and because of my structure and the long limbs and everything, you can see that there's progress, no doubt, but you would not think, wow, there's 20 pounds more muscle on this person, right? Whereas other people, depending on, again, limb length, structure, things like that, they might gain three, four pounds, and you can really tell. But a lot of times in pictures, you won't be able to tell at all. I train a lot of people, and usually I will ask for before pictures so that we can gauge progress. So you might say, well, then what is the point of taking those pictures if they're not useful? And that's the thing, I'm not saying they're not useful. Pictures are very useful, first of all, over a long period of time and making significant progress, you are going to be able to see those differences, especially during a fat loss phase. During a fat loss phase, I think pictures can be critical. I can't tell you how many people I've trained where they think, man, I'm not sure if anything's changing or you know, I'm basically about the same weight, I'm not sure. And then you look at pictures, again, in the same lighting and, oh wow, midsection's clearly leaner. Oh wow, I have a vein that I didn't have before. As we slowly progress, we tend to lose sight of where we started, right? You think, hey, I mean, this happens to a ton of people in the gym, right? Once you get that pump, that's now your reference point, and you forget that, wow, I've actually put on five, 10 pounds of muscle over years, and you feel like you're not making that much progress. So I do think pictures are very helpful. It just has to be under the exact same conditions, which can be very hard. And again, I like them more for a fat loss phase, you know, from one year to the next can be helpful, but if you're like bulking up and you're trying to take pictures every couple of weeks, you're probably only gonna look worse because you're gaining body fat. So unless you're just gaining tremendous amounts of muscle, you're generally gonna just look worse in pictures through a bulk. And likewise, even if you lose muscle during a cut, you're probably going to continue to look better in pictures, even if in person everybody says you now look like you don't lift because you lost 20 pounds. But I just wanted to be clear that I do think pictures are useful. I definitely have tons of pictures, both just to be a tool and for progress, right? I think we all like to take pictures when we look our best and obviously we don't necessarily like to share the pictures where we're not looking our best but they are a very good tool when used accurately and correctly i just think that people really need to be wary about pictures we see online when the comparisons have really any differences because truly you can make more you can make dramatically more progress in a picture in a single day by changing lighting or flexing or whatever than you could make real progress in three years when actually having everything constant. That's how much of a difference that can make. And it's very hard to be objective, which is why I always ask people, you know, it's not, I'm not trying to like call people out. It's just when I see them show this picture and then this picture, and I mean, unless it's like clear, they put on like 20 to 30 pounds of muscle. When they say, look at this progress, I always wonder, okay, and then this actually leads into the next point of what do I actually use to measure progress and if we can't just go by pictures? And that's when I'll say, well, what are your muscular measurements, okay? How is your strength? What's your waistline? How are your calipers? Because none of these individually are going to be enough to give you a true picture. If you look at the scale, everybody knows that that can be problematic, right? You can have water weight issues. You can just be holding a lot of food bulk, especially if you're on a high volume diet. There are certain muscle groups that are going to have more fat around them. For example, my thighs, obviously every time I bulk up, even if I really gain no muscle, my thighs are going to get bigger because there's more fat there than let's say my calves or my forearms where there's almost no fat and most of the growth, you know, there might be a little bit of fat throughout a bulk there, but most of the growth is going to come from actual muscle. So same thing with like, if you just did like a chest measurement, right? Your upper back and your chest can gain quite a bit of fat. So you might actually maintain all of your muscle during a cut and those measurements could drop. Right? That doesn't mean you're losing muscle, but still measurements are helpful. And again, I like to see measurements at the same body fat. If you are the same body fat, but your arms are now a quarter of an inch bigger, then you've gained muscle. If you gained a bunch of fat, you were 10% body fat, and now you're 15% body fat, and now your arms are bigger, you might not have gained muscle. You may very well have gained muscle, but it's hard to say. It, you know, I always like to look at a reference point at a given body fat, do you have more muscle? Somebody made a comment on a video a while ago and they said, so what, you think if you just ate a lot more and you worked out this often, you wouldn't gain any muscle? And it's like, no, of course I would gain muscle. Anybody would gain muscle if they gained weight. If I ate up to 250 pounds, I would have a lot more lean body mass and actual muscle mass 
that I do now. If I had continued and ate to 300 pounds, I would have even more lean body mass and muscle mass than I have now. But the whole question is when I cut back to a reasonable body fat, do I now have more net muscle than I did before at that same body fat? That's why I stopped bulking up because after lifting for about 12 years, I said, all right, last time, huge bulk, 40 pounds gain. By the time I cut back down, no net progress. So that's when I realized, okay, for me at this point, unless I wanna really start like blasting sports supplements or something like that, it's just not gonna be in the cards. It's not gonna be something that I want to pursue because it, you know, if you're gaining half a pound of muscle or even no muscle, why are you still bulking and cutting so much? Two other great measures of progress are overall strength on specific movements for reps and calipers. So I'll go to calipers first. Calipers or skin fold measurements are a great way to gauge progress. Waistline is useful. I have measured my waistline since I was 14 years old and I've used it as a comparison. The thing is, when you gain muscle, when you gain substantial amounts of muscle, you are still going to gain muscle in the midsection, right? So when I started at 130 pounds, I had a 29 inch waist. Now, even when I am as lean as I was back then, I still will have a 31 and a half to 32 inch waist, but I am 60 pounds heavier. So I've actually gained two to three inches on my waist, even at a given body fat, because of the amount of muscle that I've gained. If you look at somebody like Jay Cutler, in contest condition even, the dude probably has a 36 inch waist because of all of that muscle, right? That's common for a lot of these big bodybuilders. Just as a point of reference, a lot of these bodybuilders, yeah, there's somebody who claims like a 29 inch waist, and not to say like some of these physique competitors, they really just have like incredibly small waist. But for the most part, as you gain that much muscle, you are going to gain waist size. I think a good example is Paul Canoe, right? The guy looks like he has a crazy tiny waist. But I remember when we worked out recently, and frankly, I think, now again, this was in the middle of the day, so that absolutely changes things. But measured at the navel, I think he still had above a 33 inch waist. And this is a dude who, I mean, his waist is ridiculous compared to his hugely broad shoulders and everything like that. His waist looks so tiny. But even then, it was 33 at the navel, so maybe upon waking, it's like 32. But he's 5'7 and like 200 pounds, right? So relative to that and the super wide shoulders and back, it looks small. But the point being with the waist, over time that will grow and it will fluctuate hugely depending on bloat. So I like it as a reference point, you know, especially during a cut, just seeing that it's trending down. But calipers are going to be more objective, right? Those skin fold measurements aren't gonna change too much with bloat. Now, if you are holding a lot of water, they actually can change. You'll notice that it actually becomes like squishier. You can actually hit the skin and it just kind of slowly goes down. So you're supposed to wait a second or two to let that kind of like get some of the water out. Uh, but calipers can fluctuate, but for the most part, calipers, if you learn how to do it properly, will be fairly accurate. That doesn't mean the body fat calculations are gonna be accurate. They really seem to underestimate mine. When I'm 12%, it'll tell me I'm 7%, you know, and I don't know if it's just, like my skin is just squishier there and it really just kind of sinks in, uh, but they, they really underestimate it. But I will look at overall, like what are the actual measurements? It's okay, eight millimeters here, it's four millimeters here, it's 12 millimeters here. And I will watch that as it goes up during a bulk or goes down during a cut. And I think that's a great way to reference it. So in this example, I would say, hey, Brian or anybody who has these pictures, you're the same weight. Well, look at your chest, your abdominal and your thigh skin folds at a minimum. Are they lower? Because if you're telling me you're the exact same weight and your calipers are exactly the same, I can just about guarantee you haven't gained muscle. Because if you had gained muscle and you're the same weight, you'd have less fat. If you had less fat, your skin folds would be lower, pretty much without exception. And the last thing I like to use, as I mentioned, is strength. So strength for reps. So that doesn't mean that, hey, for the first time ever, even though you're 10 years into lifting, you just started deadlifting and you put on 100 pounds on your deadlift. Wow, like you, you must have gained so much muscle. No, that is a hugely technique dependent move, right? I put on 100 pounds when I was about 20 to 21 years old on my deadlift by changing from traditional to sumo stands, by learning the technique. I went from, at the time, I think 325 for five up to 405 for six, right? But I was already a little higher on conventional. Point being, I gained a ton of strength at that time, but it doesn't mean that I actually gained a ton of muscle. I, I did gain some muscle, but not as much as the strength increase would, would make it seem like, okay? So we're really looking for isolation exercises, exercises that are not so new to you. So it doesn't have to be isolation, but things that you are used to, 
and that you've been doing for a while and four reps. So not a one rep max. Again, we're really trying to say like muscularly, have, has your muscular strength increased? So for instance, bench press obviously is a compound exercise. I guess if you were really trying to be like a purist here, you'd say an isolation exercise, like a, and even like a machine where there's the minimal change in any technique and it's literally just you using the muscle and that force that you could produce, that would probably be the most accurate way to do this. But for instance, I've been bench pressing for, I don't know, since I was 13 years old. So 16 years I've been bench pressing. My technique is not changing much. If my bench press goes from 225 for 15 to 225 for 18, I've probably actually gained some muscle to do that because I've been doing that exercise for so, so, so long. And if I hit an actual PR for reps, I've probably actually gained some muscle. And I would say, okay, you're back at this weight. It's now a year later, two years later. Are you curling more? Is your 12 rep max on a curl higher? Can you do more weight or more reps on pull-ups or this exercise? Whatever you like to do, it's fine, but it should be a reference that you were doing in both of those instances. And so it's hard if you're using like random gyms or something like that, because it's not gonna be standardized. So in summary, I do think pictures can be very useful, particularly for fat loss phases, particularly over long spans of time to see where you progress or where you need to progress if you're a bodybuilder and you have certain weak muscle groups that you're trying to bring up. But unless the pictures are in identical situations with identical lighting and same posing and all of that, they almost completely have to be thrown out. Again, if there's a 30 pound change of muscle, then sure. But at that point, what are you really comparing if it's that obvious? If you're really trying to say from one year to the next, everything has to be almost identical or it's, it's almost useless, okay? And obviously some people don't do it misleadingly. They just say, hey, look at this picture. This one looks better. Some people in the industry obviously are very misleading with it. So I would say pictures can be useful. Obviously scale weight, waistline, strength for reps, calipers. All of those are very useful to gauge progress. Um, I'm somebody who just likes to have a ton of detail. I'm not saying you have to have all of those all the time. Whenever anybody says that they've made all this progress, I say, are you actually stronger? What are your measurements? And you know, if they have calipers, great. Just because I think there's so much in the industry that's misleading. And a lot of these things, one of the quotes I said to Brian is that I think the industry is kind of centered around making insignificant progress results, study results, supplement results, a lot of these insignificant things seem more significant so that it can, I mean, so that can, they can garner a following, right? How do you have an entire field, the whole fitness industry around something that frankly, you can get 95% of the results from, from the basics. After that, sure, if you're like me, if you're like probably a lot of you guys who like to dive into those little details, and that's great. I just find it fascinating. If I can actually make 5% more progress because I'm taking all these supplements or I'm doing all these little things, that's cool but I don't like to have people misled by, you know, again, a, a dramatic change in picture settings and things like that. So that is all I have for you guys today. Let me know in the comments what you think when you've been misled maybe by certain pictures or if it's a realization you had at some point when you just looked in a mirror and all of a sudden, hey, this one looks dramatically different than this one. And post down below for other topics you'd like to see me cover. Probably gonna do another Q&A soon. So if you wanna post some questions down below, feel free to do that as well. Always appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys next time.